here's what we got going today um, I'm making some new cabinet doors uh, for above the uh, dashboard um, the old ones had that mesh and I only had one and two were missing so what I'm gonna do is make three new ones that all match they'll be a little bit different than the uh, existing cabinet uh, door faces but here's one that's completed basically what I did is I took one by threes and uh, I used my Craig jig I don't know if any of you have ever used a Craig jig um, but this is kinda how these are the side rails and uh, basically what you do is you screw, you drill in on this side it creates a pocket and then um, you can drive your screw in there to join the other uh, side so that's what I got going today so I'm just gonna go through and show you how I do all that and then uh, once we got them to this stage um, I'm gonna sand them and then I'm gonna prime them and paint them the same color as what the rest of the cabinets are so come along and ride with me while I create the last one of these and kind of show you how I did that. So when you use a Craig jig, um, basically there's a there's a gauge here on the side to, to tell you basically this is three quarter inch material so on here there's uh, different steps there's half inch, five eighths, three quarters and, and it continues on. So right now I'm working with three quarter inch material so you want to set it at that and then it has this uh, clamp here that's kind of built into it um, there's different Craig jigs that you can buy and then it's also got these storage compartments for keeping your drills and your screws and things of that nature um, I mounted mine onto a board so that it doesn't move around and I can just when I put it away the whole board and everything it stays on the board the entire time so you just want to put it in and then clamp it down and then it has this step drill and then when you slide it through in here I'll show you you put your step drill in there and then you want to leave a gap on the bottom uh, so that your drill one doesn't go into the, the plastic base and then two it's not too deep on your uh, material here because otherwise your screw will go through the other side of the adjoining material so you want to just make sure and set that right and you do that with a set screw and then you just set that sleeve on there and that way when you drill um, every time you do it will be consistent and it will stay the same you want to make sure when you're working with Craig if you have a finished side on your material you want the finished side to be the side that you don't drill into because when you're working you're working on the back side of your material so that like here I'll show you here's where I drilled in you can see the pockets right here that to accommodate the screws when you drill in you can actually buy wood plugs you can put them in there glue them in and then sand them uh, for what I'm doing I don't need to do that because these are you're never really gonna see that so I'm not gonna do it so you want to go ahead and line it up where you want to line it up and then go ahead and clamp it down and then you just Go in and drill out your hole. And there's uh, three different holes here, uh, depending on how far the spacing you want on your holes. Uh, I'm having mine a little bit closer because what I did is I routed this uh, ledge here to be able to accommodate the plywood that's going to be in there. It's going to be inlaid in there. So. Um, I wanted it, wanted them spaced a little bit closer so it gave me the space to be able to do that. So you just do that one side and then when you go to do the next side you just want to make sure you drill on the correct holes. And pocket hole joinery. Um, it's easy for your do-it-yourselfers. You're not having to use biscuits and things of that nature to create a create a joint when you're uh, doing your doing your cabinet door faces. And also, when you're putting in your screws, 
um, if you're using a this drill doesn't have a lot of torque so I don't have to worry about it you want to make sure if you're using a larger drill to turn your clutch all the way down to its lowest setting so you don't drive the screw all the way through the pocket and push it out the other side of the material so I use this I use this little drill because it doesn't have a lot of torque to it and that way uh, I don't have to worry about that happening um, this basically is going to go on here and my screws will go in here and then I'll drive those in I'll show you that in a minute so now when I join these uh, you can see I got these are the pockets right here and it's going to join together like that I know that this is ingrain and when you glue on ingrain it's not really a strong bond but I just put a little bit of glue it helps it helps with the bond the screws are going to be the main thing that hold it together but a little bit of glue can help so I put a little bit of glue down and then uh, I line it up where I want it and the thing that you need to do with this is you need to clamp this area both on this board and that board to create a nice tight and also make it so it lines up perfectly because when you if you go to screw it without the clamp on there this is going to slide and it's going to pull it out of it pull it out of where you want it to be so I clamp I, I use my uh, clamp to uh, and line that up like that and then I use my clamp on both boards and that just holds it in place so it can't scoot around on you or nothing like that so and then along with the Craig uh, kit that you get a special uh, bit here um, the screws I'm using coarse screws because it's a soft wood the screw just has this square end and that's the way this tip is and that's that uh, they give you that in the set as well so and then uh, you just draw them in and like I said I'm using this because it doesn't have a lot of torque so it won't drive that screw all the way through and you just want to drive this in until you feel it hit that shoulder and that's it This is the finished joint right here. That's what it ends up looking like. Um, what I did after I uh, joined everything, I uh, did a round over uh, on the edge. And then <clears throat> I also rounded the end of my pieces here. So then when it joins, it gives it that little bit of uh, uh, detail. Otherwise, it'd just be two pieces put together and, and the seam wouldn't look real good. So I just uh, did that. It gives it a little bit of distinction. And then um, I also routed this back edge. And what that does, that creates a ledge for my plywood to sit in. And I'll show you the uh, router bit that I use for that. It's called a, a cabinet joinery bit. And basically what it looks like... This rides along, along the edge of your material. So you see this bearing here rides along the edge of this material. And then this is the actual cutting surface. And what that does, that cuts in and creates your, your ledge. Um, and what, you, what I did is I just measured what my plywood is and it's 200 thousandths, so that's just under a quarter inch. And uh, I set that on my router to that depth and then just routed that out and then I'm going to cut my plywood to fit in here and then I just glue it in uh, let that dry and then we're good to go the other thing I'm going to do is uh, this Craig jig setup that I have I'll go ahead and put that in the description so you can see that there's a bunch of different ones uh, this is the black one here is a micro so it's for smaller screws when you're using smaller material and things of that nature but I'll put it in the uh, in the description below so you can check that out this is what I have so far um, I routed my ledge here to accommodate my plywood and then I cut my plywood down to fit inside that pocket um, now the the router bit creates this radius in the corner so I could chisel that out and make it square but I don't really care about that because what I ended up doing is I 45 each corner 
so that it'll basically fit right in like that. So you can see there's a little thing here, but again, this is the back side of the cabinet. You're not going to see it, so I really don't care. So that sits there nice and flush. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to glue that in. Um, I use uh, construction grade hot glue, so I'm just going to uh, get the hot glue gun up and heated and then glue that down. And then basically what that looks like once it's completed, it looks like that. So it comes out pretty good. I think it looks okay. Um, what I'm going to do now before I prime and paint it is I'm going to drill my hole for my knob. This door, drawer is, uh, door is uh, 26 and a half. So what I did is I went over 13 and a quarter, which is half, and then I went up an inch and an eighth, which is what the old one was. So I'm going to match that. And then I'm going to drill that out so that uh, that will accommodate the uh, knobs that I'm going to be putting in there. And then once I have them painted, then I'll have to install the uh, hinges on the back side like we had here. I think these, these uh, door faces uh, came out pretty nice. So once we get them all painted up, they're going to look pretty good in there. Is there something I can help with? No, I need a different kind of thing because this one's not working out. And how do you feel about that? Huh? <laughs> how do you I'm not happy because i got to go back to the store again. I just got back from the store. I know, that's what I'm saying. I'm not happy that we got to go back to the store again. Got to get some different roller catches because those ones don't work. So. Bummer. The roller catches. We also needed more knobs, huh? I got more. I got a bag more. It's gonna be more than that, but yeah, the whole back area. You can tell it's getting warm. The ducks are all sitting in the shade over there. Still not swearing because the camera's on. Ta-da! Now over there. Uh, over the driver's side. I still gotta paint those ones. Ooh, looking pretty.